Hey there, and welcome back to another graph theory with Python video. I'm calling this one part four and a half because in this video, I'm gonna go over solutions to some of the problems and exercises that I left in the last video. That video is about degrees and degree sequences. If you haven't watched it yet, you should probably do that before you watch this video. I'll put a link to it up here and also down in the video description. So let's get straight into it. The first exercise has to do with the relationship between in-degree, out-degree, and total degree. These are the three types of degrees in a directed graph. The question was based on the relationship of these three degrees for any given node. That is, the in-degree plus the out-degree is equal to the total degree. So the question was, is the minimum in-degree plus the minimum out-degree equal to the minimum total degree? That's part A. In part B, is the opposite. Is the maximum in degree plus the maximum out degree equal to the maximum total degree? Well, the answer is no for both parts A and B. And our solution is a counterexample. That is an example of a directed graph for which those two relations don't hold. And it turns out we can actually find a really tiny counterexample with just two nodes. I'll start with two nodes, zero and one, and draw an edge pointing from node zero towards node one. In this directed graph, the minimum in degree is zero because node zero doesn't have any edges pointing into it. And the minimum out degree is also zero because node one doesn't have any edges pointing away from it. So the minimum in degree plus the minimum out degree is zero. But both nodes have total degree one. So the minimum total degree is just one and zero plus zero does not equal one. At least I hope not because that would really screw a lot of things up. This same directed graph is a counterexample for part B of the exercise. That is, is the maximum in degree plus the maximum out degree equal to the maximum total degree? Well, node zero has out degree one and node one has out degree zero. So the maximum out degree is one and the same for maximum in degree. Node zero has in degree zero, node one has in degree one. So the max in degree is one. Again, the maximum total degree is one because both nodes have total degree one. But one plus one is two and that doesn't equal one. So this tiny little graph brought both of those conjectures just crashing down. The second exercise asks you to write two Python functions to calculate the in degrees and total degrees of a directed graph. Let's start with total degrees. All right, so here's a function called total degrees. It has a single parameter, which is expected to be a directed graph and returns a dictionary of all the total degrees for each node in the graph. The first thing we do is check that the graph is in fact directed. And if it's not, we raise a value error, telling the user that they can't call total degrees on an undirected graph. In part four of graph theory with Python, we saw that the total degree of a node is just the number of edges connected to it, whether they're coming into it or out from it. In other words, we can think of it as ignoring the direction of the edges and just looking at the degree of the undirected graph with the same nodes and edges as the directed graph. And that's exactly how we're going to calculate it here. We'll start by creating a new undirected graph with the same nodes and same edges as the directed graph passed to the total degrees function, but we'll set is directed to true. Then we'll return the result of calling degrees on that undirected graph. So let's take the total degrees function for a spin and make sure it's working right. The code for the total degrees function and all the code we're writing in these solutions can be found in a file called solutions.py which you can find on the GitHub repository for the Graph Theory with Python video series. I'll post a link to that down in the video description. In my terminal, I'm gonna run Python interactively using the dash i option and execute the solutions.py file. That'll drop me into a REPL session where I can interact with everything we've defined so far. We need a graph to work with, a directed graph. Let's do a directed star. I'll start by importing the star graph function from the graph.py file we've been building up throughout the video series, and I'll use that to create a new graph g that's just the star graph with four nodes. The star graph function returns an undirected graph, so we need to convert this to a directed graph. To do that, I'll create a new graph called g underscore dir with the same nodes and same edges as g, but I'll set is directed to true. Now I can call total degrees on g underscore dir. And I get a dictionary that tells me that node zero has degree three and nodes one, two, and three all have degree one. And that's exactly what we expect. So the total degrees function is working great. Now we're gonna write a function that calculates the in degrees of a directed graph. And we're gonna see two different ways to do it. In part four of graph theory with Python, we learned about the relationship between in degree, out degree, and total degree. 
that is, in degree plus out degree is equal to total degree. So I can calculate the in degree of a node by subtracting the out degree from the total degree. That's the first way we're gonna solve this. We can already get the total degrees of a directed graph using our new total degrees function. And we can also get the out degrees using the out degrees function that we wrote in part four. I'll call this first function in degrees one. It takes a single parameter expected to be a directed graph and returns a dictionary containing all of the in degrees of the nodes in the graph. Now in this function, I'm not gonna explicitly check that the graph passed to the function is a directed graph. I'm gonna use the total degrees and out degrees functions, and both of those do that check for me. So let's start by getting all the total degrees in the graph. I'll call the total degrees function on the graph passed to in degrees one, and assign the result to a variable called graph total degrees. Next, I'll get the out degrees of the graph by calling the out degrees function and assigning the result to a variable called graph out degrees. To get the in degrees, I need to subtract the out degrees from the total degrees. And to do this, I'm going to use a dictionary comprehension. It's gonna loop over all the nodes in the graph and then use the node as dictionary keys to get the total degree and out degree for that node. I'll subtract those two and assign it to the key for that node. So that should do it for us. Let's see if it's working. Back in my REPL, I'm gonna call in degrees one on g underscore dir, which is the directed star graph on four nodes we defined earlier. That gives me a dictionary that tells me that node zero has in degree zero and nodes one, two, and three each have in degree one. And if we take a look at the picture of the graph, we can see that's exactly right. But there's something that's a little bit less than ideal about the solution. Both the total degrees and out degrees functions build an adjacency list representation of the graph. Now, they don't do it directly, but if you follow the logic, they each end up calling the underscore degrees function, which we defined in part four. And that function calls the adjacency dict function that we defined in part two of the video series. And if we take a look at the code for that function, we'll see there's actually quite a bit going on. There's a loop inside adjacency dict, which loops over all the edges in the graph, has to append to a list twice, and also check whether or not the graph is directed on each step of the loop. So there's a lot of work being done twice, and we don't really need to do that. So now let's write a solution that only builds the adjacency list representation once. I'll call that function in degrees two. Just like in degrees one, it has a single parameter, which is supposed to be a directed graph, and returns a dictionary containing the in degrees of all the nodes in the graph. But to calculate the in degrees, we're gonna use a little trick that I haven't actually mentioned yet. That is, if you look at a directed graph and you reverse the direction of all the edges in the graph, then the out degrees of the nodes in the original graph become in degrees in the graph with the reversed edges. So if we create a new graph from the old one whose edges are reversed, and pass that graph to the out degrees function, the result will be the in degrees of the original graph. It's a cute little trick, don't you think? So to reverse the edges, we're gonna create a list called reversed edges, and I'll use a list comprehension here. We'll loop over all the edges in the graph and create tuples in the opposite order of the original edge. So where the tuple in the original graph was node one comma node two, the new tuple is gonna be node two comma node one. Then we'll build a new graph which I'll call reverse graph, which has the same nodes as the original graph, but uses the reversed edges list instead of the original edges list. Finally, we'll call out degrees on the reverse graph and return the result. Going back to my REPL, I should be able to call in degrees two on the directed star graph we created earlier and get the exact same result as in degrees one. Let's try it out. Hey, look at that, that's fantastic. So the reason that in degrees two only builds the adjacency list once is because it's only calling the out degrees function and not the total degrees function as well. Now, this doesn't just make a difference from a practical standpoint. We can actually prove that it's better. To do that, we'll use the timeit module in the Python standard library. Now, if you don't know much about timeit, that's fine. What I'm going to do is import the timeit function from the timeit module. That function is going to let us time how long it takes in degrees one and in degrees two to execute. So I'll call time it, and the first thing I have to do is pass to it the code that I want to execute. And I have to do that as a Python string. So I'll pass to it the string containing in degrees one g underscore dir. Now, by default, time it isn't aware of everything we've already defined in the REPL. So I have to tell it what all that stuff is. I'm gonna use the globals function to do that. And I'll pass that to the globals parameter of the time it function. If you're not sure exactly what this means, that's fine. Just know that what I'm doing is telling timeit what exactly I've defined so it knows what in degrees one is and what g underscore dir is. Now when I execute this, it's gonna to return to me a floating point value. 
that represents the number of seconds it took to execute the function. You'll see we get a value back that represents a little bit more than 4 seconds. Now this doesn't mean that in degrees 1 took 4 seconds to run, because time it actually executes in degrees 1 many, many times. It might be tens of times, hundreds of times, or even thousands of times. And this value represents the total number of seconds to do all of that. Now let's do the same thing with in degrees 2. The value that returns is a little bit more than 2 seconds, about half the time that in degrees 1 took. And that makes sense, because in degrees 2 is only building the adjacency list once, whereas in degrees 1 is building it twice. So in degrees 2 does about half the work. I've put both of these solutions in the solutions.py folder in the GitHub repository for this video course, but in the next video, part 5, I'll only include in degrees 2, and I'll rename it to just in degrees. Oh, and by the way, we talked about minimum and maximum degree, as well as minimum and maximum in degree, minimum and maximum out degree, and so on, in part 4, but we never wrote any Python functions to calculate those. So let's do that right now. I'll show you the minimum and maximum degree functions that I've written. Both of these take a single parameter, which is expected to be an undirected graph in this case, and return the minimum or maximum degree respectively. They do that by calling the degrees function, which if you remember from part 4, returns a dictionary containing all the degrees of all the nodes in the graph. We then convert this dictionary to a list using the values method. This gives us a list of nothing but the degrees, basically the degree sequence. Then we use the max and min built-in functions to get the maximum and minimum values out of that list. Now, the code for minimum in degree and maximum out degree and all the other variations is really similar to what you just saw. So I'll let you do all the rest of that. And don't forget, all of this code is on GitHub. So if you get stuck or you just want to go take a look at it, feel free to check it out. The third and final exercise asks you to find a sequence of positive integers whose sum is even but isn't a graphic sequence meaning you can't find a graph whose degree sequence is that sequence of positive integers. And there's a really small counterexample, the sequence with two twos. Now, you might be thinking, well, hold up. I can draw a graph with two nodes, each of degree two. Just draw two nodes and add a loop to each node. And well, yeah, you'd be right, but we're not gonna allow loops. In most cases, loops don't add anything constructive to a graph. They're kind of just noise. Now some cases. There are times when loops are important, so that's not what I'm saying. But for the vast majority of cases, and in all the cases we're going to look at in this video series, we're just going to ignore them. So now that you know we can't use loops, you might say, well hold up, what if I draw two nodes connected by two edges? And again, yeah, you'd be right, except that we're not going to allow multiple edges. Multiple edges don't really add much to a graph, they're just noisy. And again, that's not always the case. Sometimes multiple edges are meaningful. In fact, you've seen an example where multiple edges are meaningful. The Konigsberg graph we looked at in part one of this video series. But graphs without loops and without multiple edges are so common that a lot of times graph theorists will just ignore them. They just exclude them from the discussion. They're special cases. So that's what we're gonna do. So if we don't allow loops and we don't allow multiple edges between nodes, then we cannot draw a graph whose degree sequence is two twos. If you did try to draw it, you'd start with two nodes, you draw an edge between them, and then you'd have the start of two more edges coming off each node. But where do they go? Nowhere. So you can't draw a graph. In other words, the sequence two two is not graphic, but its sum is even because two plus two is four. So what this means for us is that just the fact that the degree sequence of a graph always sums to an even number isn't enough information for us to determine whether or not any sequence is graphic. But I told you in the last video that given any sequence, there is a way to determine whether or not that sequence is graphic. And that's what we're going to talk about in part five. And I'm super excited about it because we get to talk about our first graph algorithm. So stay tuned for that video. If you'd like to get caught up on what we've done in the Graph Theory with Python video series so far, here's a link to the full playlist. And over here's a link to a video YouTube thinks you'll like. And finally, click on my face here to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm David Amos, and I'll see you in the next video.